When I go home, I use my computer every single day for multiple hours. Like, anything in moderation is not that bad. An addiction, but like, it's normal to people, like everyone does it. So it's both, good and bad. Honestly, I'm not really worried about social media. Maybe like, things like, that happen in real life, like global warming, like, anything that's gonna be detrimental to our planet, basically. is what's called an environmental justice community. And there are asthma rates higher than the Queensborough average west of this street. And that has a lot to do with intentional environmental racism. Uh, when, when you look at any major city, unfortunately, there are these zones, what are sometimes called sacrifice zones in which there are environmental conditions that are dispro disproportionately impacting uh, certain vulnerable communities or certain communities that have been historically excluded from social resources. Unfortunately, uh, our, so our society will, will, will place even more challenges on those people because they're, they don't have the political power to stop it or they, or they can't access the courts. With the way climate change is going, it might become impossible to plant using traditional agricultural methods. Oh, environmental justice is where like people have like the same, it's not like a lot of congestion and traffic and pollution in one area and not enough in another. Some people live in certain areas where they can't really do much about what the city does to their environment. So they're trying, people trying to fix that. Unfortunately, people often think that when someone cannot speak, it means they are not intelligent. This is not true for me, and it can be frustrating to have people think that. My body does not always listen to what my mind tells it to do, so sometimes I am saying or doing things I do not mean to say or do. It's an adult who's typing on a tablet. Um, they think that adult is literally being rude. For me, it really took me out of my comfort zone to actually try and like challenge myself and do something different. Um, and things that I would never know unless I would actually get a job in production. And so now I have like a head start um, knowledge. You know, when I first moved here, there were lots of factory buildings and older buildings, especially around the Queens Plaza area and now it's beginning to resemble a mini Manhattan. And for someone who comes from a family who doesn't own a car, Elmhurst is like a really good location because of its public transport. So we've been trying to look for new places, but the cost of living in Elmhurst has just been like skyrocketing. Gentrification involves like rent prices increasing and um, like a wider, richer crowd taking over smaller communities, especially POC. Um, I got deployed into the emergency room. Um, we got training for like the first, someone basically like did a, I wanna say like a huddle before our first shift working in the emergency room. And that was so scary for us. I actually started connecting on um, patients and their family via video. Um, so I did that for most of my time in the emergency room. There was only so much we could do. And then after that, it's just kind of become almost like a patient cheerleader like keep going keep going you can you can do this you got to you got to understand that this is what you have to do you got to breathe and um, some did some didn't for like me and my coworkers like the nurses like and the PAs and the aides like it was a lot to deal with we were having 40 50 patients a day and then half of our list would die if you weren't in the hospital, you have no idea what we went through. None whatsoever. And we can't describe it enough to tell you what it was like. The only thing that I could think to do is just to teach the staff just basic MCI training. 
MCI training is mass casualty incident training, and this is like just just basic uh, triage. battlefield triage, right?